What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Bo Nickel disappointed with the UFC. Throughout the course of Bo Nickel's run with the UFC, it seemed as though he and former Swedish national wrestling champion Hamza Chimaev are on a collision course of sorts. With two very similar styles and widespread success in their respective disciplines, it has continued to look as though the pair are destined to meet inside the octagon. Last week, when Chimaev found himself without an opponent for UFC 294, the promotion didn't contact Nickel to step in on short notice. In a recent video for his YouTube channel, he expressed his disappointment in the situation. I was a little disappointed. They didn't ask me. They didn't ask me to step in there. I was expecting at least an ask. Yeah, at least they're like they're a like invite. I know, like like hey, you want to do this? Uh, but no, just nothing, nothing from the UFC. So Dang. is what it is. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm guessing that they didn't want me to roll over into Abu Dhabi on like ten days' notice and smash their boy in front of his home crowd or something. So. It w they didn't even ask. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it wasn't even an option, really. While this would have been an exciting time to see Chimaev and Nickel face off with one another, Dana White has indicated that the winner of the Chimaev Usman fight will get a crack at the title. Given that Nickel is still just 5 0 in his career, it sounds as though the UFC isn't quite ready to have the two standouts fight just yet. Next up, let's take a look at Alexander Volkanovsky reveals plan for Islam Makachev. Alexander Volkanovsky may not have had a full training camp to prepare for his rematch with Islam Makachev. However, the featherweight kingpin has his sights firmly set on avenging his UFC 284 loss and capturing lightweight gold. Leading up to a short notice clash with Makachev, Volkanovsky expressed his desire to get a finish and make a statement while speaking in an interview with Submission Radio. So obviously I want to go out there and I want to hurt him and uh, yeah, we'll try and make sure it doesn't go five rounds. Uh, I want to finish it early. I don't want to test this tank, gas tank. Don't get me wrong, I reckon I can do it, but let's not try and test it. Let's just finish him nice and early. And uh, again, how excited I am and how refreshed I am and mentally and physically, I'm going to be a dangerous man in there uh, next, uh, next week, so I can't wait. The last time the pair fought, Habib Nurmagomedov allegedly told Daniel Cormier that he knew Volkanovski would give Makachev a tough fight. Heading into the rematch, Nurmagomedov has spent time training with his longtime friend as he makes his final preparations. In the UFC 294 countdown video, he spoke about what Makachev's title win meant to him. I don't even know when I was more happy, when I win my title or Islam. Heading into the fight, the big question is whether or not Volkanovski can make things just as competitive on such short notice. Next up, let's take a look at Fighter Breaks Silence on USADA. Paulo Costa has been one of the most tested fighters under USADA, and according to the former title challenger, in his experience, USADA officials often woke him up for tests while he was sleeping. Much like Alexander Volkanovsky alleged leading up to his second clash with Max Holloway, USADA officials allegedly woke Costa up at 4 a.m. to collect samples on several occasions. In a lengthy message posted on social media, he wrote, I hate the way you saw to chase me, Costa wrote. Sometimes in hard training camp, I often had anxiety before going to sleep because I was woken up at 4 a.m. to urinate and have my blood drawn. I could only sleep after breaking my diet and slept three hours later, losing quality sleep and morning training. Once they came at me four times in the same week. I did seven tests that time in only one week. With Costa out of his UFC 294 clash with Hamza Chimaev, he has remained eager to return to competition sooner rather than later, meaning that he will have to likely deal with USADA's testing between now and the end of the year when the UFC's partnership with the US Anti-Doping Agency will officially end. Now, let's shift gears and take a look at John Jones sends a message to Israel Adesanya. There was a time when John Jones and Israel Adesanya would go back and forth on Twitter, hurling verbal jabs at one another via the internet. However, that is no longer the case. On the heels of the last Stylebender's shocking loss to Sean Strickland, the former champ has revealed that he plans to take some time off before making a return to the Octagon. Although he has no plans to retire, Adesanya wants to take a quote-unquote long time off from fighting. The situation earned a heartfelt response from heavyweight champion Jon Jones, who squashed his beef with Adesanya earlier this year. He wrote, Hey Stylebender, I just want to let you know I support your decision to take a break from fighting. Taking those last three years off was one of the best decisions I've made. Always put you first, brother. Protect your heart, protect your mind and spirit. Proud of you, champ. With Adesanya content to sit on the sidelines, Sean Strickland will now set his sights on defending the middleweight title against the winner of the UFC 294 clash between Hamza Chimaev and Kamaru Usman. As we approach the end of the year, it'll be interesting to see whether or not Adesanya makes his highly anticipated return to the octagon in 2024. Next, let's take a look at Hamzat is in trouble against Kamaru Usman? 
Kamaru Usman may be stepping in to fight Hamza Chimaev on short notice. However, the former pound-for-pound -pound kingpin will be entering the fight with two of the best striking coaches in the world in his corner. According to Usman's manager, Ali Abdelaziz, the former champ will have Trevor Whitman and Henry Hooft in his corner, marking the first time that the two famed coaches have cornered alongside one another after coaching opposite one another for a number of years. What fans may not know is that Usman statistically holds the record for the best takedown defense in UFC history with 97.3%. As such, many have wondered whether his upcoming clash with Chimaev will wind up being contested on the feet, much like Chimaev's clash with Gilbert Burns. Should the fight largely take place on the feet, the duo of Whitman and Hooft could potentially end up being the difference maker for Usman, if they're able to pick up on valuable mid-fight reads. With the fight right around the corner and a title shot on the line, it's safe to say that the stakes are at an all-time high for both men. Next, let's take a look at Dylan Danis heading to the UFC next? Dylan Danis' performance against Logan Paul didn't earn him any new fans from the sounds of it. Throughout the course of the fight between he and Paul, Danis looked gun-shy and unwilling to throw. As the fight progressed, he resorted to shooting for a takedown and attempting to snatch up a guillotine that sparked widespread pandemonium. In the wake of the evening's festivities, Danis wrote, UFC next proclaiming that he would be making a big step up in the combat sports world after the loss. The tweet immediately caught the attention of the MMA community, with many showing no interest in the 2-0 fighter signing with the promotion. Terrence McKinney quickly responded, writing, Nah, we're good, while UFC vet Tyson Nam wrote, As the water girl, Dennis' plan also caught the attention of fans, with one joking, Get him the CM Punk deal, and another shutting down his claim by writing, I mean, in the lead-up, I ended up on Dylan's side, but failing at takedowns and chokes on Logan did not convince me of a UFC contract. In the wake of the loss, it'll be interesting to see whether Danis decides to return to MMA. Prior to undergoing a pair of knee surgeries, Danis went 2-0 under the Bellator MMA banner, picking up two submission wins at 175 pounds. Next, let's take a look at Michel Pajeda reveals what's next after big win. On Saturday night, fan favorite Michel Pajeda put on an impressive performance against Andre Petrovsky, proving to everyone that he's truly a force to be reckoned with at 185 pounds. After missing weight for a scheduled welterweight clash with Stephen Wonderboy Thompson over the summer, Pajeda made quick work of Petrovsky at the apex this past weekend, picking up a TKO victory just over a minute into the bout. After emerging from the fight unscathed, Pajeda wants to return to action as soon as possible. However, despite that, he has no particular opponent in mind. After his impressive performance on Saturday, he spoke with media members to discuss the future. I would like to come back as soon as possible. I don't have anybody in mind since it's my new division. I didn't have time enough to think about that, but I'm here to work. As soon as the UFC needs me, I'm going to work. Don't forget that I have five straight victories in the welterweight division. In my opinion, I do believe I deserve to be ranked at middleweight, but since it's my first fight, I don't know. I don't make the decisions. If I need one more fight in order to be part of the rankings, I'm going to fight. It's all good. After a thrilling bout, it's safe to say that as long as Pajeda is healthy, the UFC will likely want him to get back in the octagon as soon as possible. With the UFC yet to announce a number of fights for the December UFC 296 card, it's entirely possible that fans get a chance to see Pajeda competing in front of a live audience before we make the leap into 2024. Habib fires back at Joe Rogan after Joe claimed that Alex Volkanovsky was the real winner in the first fight against Islam Makhachev. But it's also, it's like you see vulnerability in Islam after that fight with Volkanovsky. First of all, you see how good Volkanovsky really is. Time for one. animal. Yeah. He's number one pound 100%. for pound. You have to say, like, they, they have him not listed as pound for pound because he lost that fight. I think you make a real argument that he won that fight. I think he won the fight. In my mind, he won the fight. I think he did more damage. I think yeah. he imposed his skill set. It's also insanely impressive that he goes up from 45 to fight a massive 55. Yeah. And at the end of the fight, he's on top, beating him up. He drops him, gets yeah. on top of him, and, and had ma massive moments throughout the fight. But it at least gives an air of vulnerability to Islam, where before that, yeah. most people were like, this guy's unstoppable. No. Habib said, First round, second round, and fourth round. For sure, third round, okay. 50-50, that's it. Like, it was 3-2 or 4-1, 100% Islam defend his title. Patty Pimblett breaks silence on his fight against Tony Ferguson. Patty thinks a first round finish on Tony will be his ticket to facing the best fighters in the division and securing a spot in the top 15 so he can face bigger opponents. Here's what Patty had to say while talking to the schmo. Yeah, the boogeyman lad, it's, a, it's, a, it's an honor to share the cage with him, to be honest, lad. Someone who's had a 12 fight win streak in the lightweight division. All I'm thinking about now is coming out and finishing Tony Ferguson in the first round. You know what I mean? Make his statements, let everyone know what they were missing. 
and then I'll start looking at ranked opponents in the new year. Top comments. Connor calling out KSI when he's due to fight Chandler just shows he's on drugs. That and the fact that he said Dennis impressed him against Logan. Fair play to Dylan. He never planned to win. He just showed up for the bag and didn't want to get knocked out. Funny how Dana called USADA going full Britney for telling their side, but he didn't call himself Greg Hardy for slapping his wife. LOL, but I guess it's easier judging others. Dylan was all talk no show. No wonder he barely competes. Dude was scared to do anything. Make sure to leave a comment and you might get featured in our next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss any MMA news. Check out our video from yesterday if you missed it. See you tomorrow.